God bless, bless you guys. Uh, this is Sean here from Face Brain Change. I just want to come on here and uh, uh, talk to you, you know. Um, you know, all the kind of messages, guys, we hear in preaching, you know. Like, they tell you different things about... Uh, one of the most common guys out there. You're, you hear the word outward a lot in Christianity. They say uh, it's not about the outward. This is a code word they use, guys. This is how you know you're dealing with fake Christianity. Uh, if if you if you were hearing rehearsed words, you notice when I speak, guys, I don't have eloquent speech like a lot of preachers. I don't have all the verses. I, I can't just speak so perfectly, guys, like these people do. A lot of people in the church are like uh, salespeople, try to sell you something. Very eloquent in words. There's phrases like, uh, nobody's perfect and, and, and we can't, you know, nobody's perfect and it's not about outward appearances, it's about the heart and you can never do enough good and we can't work our way to heaven. These are, these are phrases you've learned in the church, you know, it's not about the, uh, fruit, it's about the root. All these kind of just words that they, it's so rehearsed, it's not real is what I'm saying. You got to be aware about this because it's very sly. They say, and this is how it was preached. I was listening to a sermon. Um, now, I'm not trying to be nitpicky, but this is actually quite serious, you know. They say, you can lose everything. People out there concerned about outward appearance, how much money they make, how much, yeah, how much money they make, how many children they have. When you ask people, tell me about your life, this is what they said, you know. When you ask them, tell me about your life, they say, uh, well, I make so-and-so pay. I go to work here or there. And, you know, I have this many children. And they're building up to basically saying, it's not about your outward appearance or how much you have, because you can lose all this, they say. But if you have Christ, that's all that matters. And and that's true, guys, that, that Christ is the focus. But this is not the reason why they're preaching this. The devil comes off as a as a... He doesn't come off, you know, like as this big bad devil, you know, with horns. He comes off as a serpent, very sly, very sly. So it's not about all this stuff you have. It's about your relationship with Christ. It's not more about outward appearance, what you do. And, and, and there's the hook, guys. This easy, easy uh, believism that you can just pray a prayer. Doesn't matter what you do. You know, if you want to go and steal from that offering plate when you go to church, go ahead and do that. Because it, it it's not about outward appearance. After all, God, you know, the scripture does say God doesn't look about judging the outward appearance. He judges the heart. And so they're saying, they've taken Christ's command as don't, you know, like the Pharisees. They cleanse the outside of the dish, but inward, it's full of what? Extortion, excess, success, excess, you know, extortion and excess, you know, and lust and all those things. And so they are right when they say that. It's not about it word appearance. It's about what's inside your heart. Do you have the lust of the world? Do you have fornication? Do you have idolatry? Do you have lasciviousness? Do you have heresy in your heart? Do you have murder in your heart? Do you have the 17 works of your flesh in your heart? Because if those things, guys, on the inside are, are not right, how can you say, like, they say, you know, just it's about being born again, they say. The whole being born again, they make it more of a sweet, sappy kind of a belief. Sappy, I pray to prayer belief. Being born again means you, you're living a new life. It was a parable Jesus taught for living a new life. Nobody's literally born again. I mean, he's speaking spiritually. He quickens your spirit, you know, raises up that part of you that's dead. But it's for the living of a new life. And they treat people... Uh, they say it's not about outward appearance. Beware when you hear this. Watch out for this when you hear this, guys. Because they're doing this to preach people happy, not holy. They're preaching people happy. And, and another thing, guys, in, in, in Christianity, what you see in the lukewarm is you see uh, they're happy in their sins. And what you see in the holiness community, they're miserable in walking in holiness. Because there's so much anger and bitterness. And see, I talked about sweetness, guys, but it was never to compromise on holiness. It's to keep the sweetness to where you're cheerfully, God loves a cheerful giver. You give the fruits of your life to God. You give, you know, 
you know, you up, up the sins of the world, you know, and you follow Christ. You give that as an expression of your love, guys. Not under compulsion, you know. And you can tell when people are doing a compulsion because there's that hatred. They're like, I don't really don't want to have to because now that I've cut these works off uh, and I'm trying to walk holy or trying to do their best, as they call it, you know. Uh, they're miserable in that and, and they're beating the servants up of God because they don't have they're not truly happy I want to take the happiness the lukewarm and let's bring it into the holiness community that are preaching holiness and let's live that and not be bitter and, and not try to take happiness for being lukewarm and not try to take holiness for uh is something that bitter and angry you know and but but there are these feel-good messages guys Let's make let's take the sweetness of the Lord. Remember, I told you, sweetness is for speaking the truth, not for speaking lies. Uh, the sweetness of the Lord, so you can speak truth, because they it's like they're uh, they will serve a good dish of holiness, but if it's full of bitterness or it's anything, it's like a dish without salt and it's angry and you just can't receive it. Keep that sweetness. Preach the word of the Lord, holiness with sweetness. But see, the, the uh, lukewarm got the sweetness part right, and we got maybe. Doctrines of holiness, right? But we need the sweetness, the lukewarm have. We need to take the sweetness of the Lord and preach like that. Because people are so happy in f serving Satan, but it's like they're miserable in serving God they treat. Like they're not really joyful. And the reason why, God, is because they're not teaching people to grow in the knowledge of God. I, I guarantee you, if you just sit on, you know, walk in holiness and turn away from idolatry and all, the, all those things that are great but you're not getting revelations uh, uh, growing in your knowledge of the Lord, you're going to get better and you're just not going to build it. It'll, it'll be preaching like you hear out of the pulpit, boring. You got to get revelation from God. Knowledge knowledge of the Lord, it t talks about us going on to know the Lord. Knowing has to do with knowledge, guys. Knowing the Lord has to do with knowledge or relationship. You know him through his word, guys. And you can learn like... Uh, what does this mean? I mean, God has four living creatures in the the, uh, the book of Revelation and, and the book of Ezekiel. But what does it mean? That's what I mean about growing. You get in holiness and then while you're in holiness, you grow in your knowledge of the Lord. And that's what keeps you from that bitterness. Like Christ has four faces. The four living creatures are a picture of the four faces of Christ, you know. And, and he taught this to a man when he took him to heaven, showed him the lion of, of a representing justice of the Lord and walking the lion of the tribe of Judah. And there's there's uh, three of the 12 tribes are put in the lion, Judah, uh, Reuben, and Gad, you know. Look up those three names, you know. Judah of the lion, you know, for uh, Judah means praise, you know, praise of the lion, you know, that zeal of praise. And that uh, Reuben, the firstborn, uh, as of a firstborn, you know, son being adopted into the kingdom, it, you know, God God makes us in the image of him and his son, you know, who's the firstborn. And then uh, you have, you have, goodness, you have, what's the third one? Uh, you have Gad, you know, meaning a troop. We overcome the world through our faith as a troop, you know. And, 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 and you take three of those 12 traps and you put them to each of those four faces and you get the picture of the... Uh, four living creatures in the book of revelation four ministry kind of things we have we have four limbs to do the job and you know you have that next one the calf you know all about sacrifice sacrificing our body giving up our lives to the lord you know like when they would do burn offerings of their body well we burn for the lord and we give up our body uh we put to death those things that should be put to death you know like that calf that ministry of that calf you know and those three traps are put into it. You have Asher, happy. Like I said, not God loves a cheerful giver. Not being miserable when you're giving up your life and bitter, but a happy. Asher means happy. That's why God put him as the fourth one. Because he's the first of the three that go into the calf, you know. The calf is like the face and then three of the, you know, body, soul, spirit, you know, you could say. And so being happy as a sacrifice unto God. And then the next after Asher... Uh, goodness, let me see what he is. Uh, it's, it's, uh, Nephtalim, meaning to wrestle, you know, wrestle against, uh, those things in your life to put them to death, you know, as that calf, to put them to death, uh, wrestling over your blessing like Jacob did. Not, in, not in a bad way, but I mean, you're zealous for good works to overcome those things. Like a, a person in fitness and, and they're running in a race, they would beat their body until, like Paul says, until they win the race. And you have a, a, the next one, let me think. 
uh, Manasseh, meaning meaning to forget. For, uh, as you're putting to death, that's all about putting to death your own life as a calf. You know, you're forgetting your own life. You know, you're forgetting you're forgetting your own life. You know, that's what Manasseh means to forget. You know, forget your father's house. Remember, uh, your heavenly father's house. You know, and 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 put to death those things in your life. And the, and then the next uh, one is a man. That's the next four living creatures. The third one. And the tribe that comes after that, let me see, is a uh, Simeon, meaning to hear as a man, you know, hear the word of God. That's what you were put on earth to do. Christ became a man, and, and so he told that person in heaven, that's why the, their living creature had the face of a man. And, you know, uh, to hear as Simeon. And the next one after him is, uh, let me see, what is it? It's Levi, to be joined to the Lord. That's what the name Levi means, for priesthood, you know. You're, uh, you're as a man of the Lord, you know. You have a head. Your head is Christ now, whether you're man or woman. Because when they say man, woman, you know, has man in it and the word, you know, and so it's put in that man form, and uh, and that's like I said, those those three you put into him. You got uh, you got Simeon to hear, and then uh, hear the word of the Lord, and to be joined as a Levi, and the third one is Issachar, become drunk off the Holy Spirit. Issachar means to become drunk, become drunk off of the wine of the Spirit, you know, as a man. You know, uh, you know the head. You know, talks about your head. You know, being being flamed with the Lord's word his, and His Spirit. And then you got the fourth one. You got the flying eagle, and Yeshua was the fourth man in, in fire, and that's the spirit of prophecy. You know, and the word of God is like fire, the spirit of prophecy. It talks about waiting on the Lord. You renew your st strength like an eagle, and and prophecy is supposed to edify the body. You know. It keeps you from being bitter when you're walking in the gifts, guys. Like I said, growing in your knowledge of the Lord, the eagle. Christ rose again from the dead as, a, as, a, as an eagle, you know. He said that to the man in heaven. So his body shot on fire. It's like it became like a light when he resurrected. And he went up to heaven as a flying eagle, you know. And so that flying eagle had those, those last three in it. It had a... Uh, Zebulun, meaning dwelling in honor. The people obey the Lord. You know, they'll go out of this life as a flying eagle dwelling in honor. That Their boat is heaven. Is that flying eagle, you know. It, it goes to a nest above. And then you have the next one, the 11th, meaning Joseph. He will add. And then the third one, Benjamin, a son of his right hand. You know, and Paul was of the tribe of Benjamin. You know, and of that flying eagle, you know. That flying eagle, it's it's for fruit, you know. And so, uh, you know, so that's what I mean, guys. Uh, be be content in holiness, and 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 don't let everybody anybody talk you out of the sacrifices of praise, the sacrifices of your body. It talks about this is your reasonable service to God. That you, you know, it talks about the sacrifices of of the body. And Paul talks about you know, uh, you know, this is your spiritual worship. You know, it's a reasonable sacrifice. Giving up your life to Christ, truly giving up your life. Not just saying, I give up my heart to God, but then your heart is full of greed and extortion and excess, as, as Christ said, you know. That's, you know, the very people that tell you don't focus on the outward are the most outward people because they say, I'm a Christian and I have the suit in the pulpit, you know, I'm an ordained, I've, I've done this many years in a seminar, I have a degree, I'm Dr. Uh, so and so, I'm doctor this or that, degrees, all those things are outward guys. But yet you got to go to the fruit behind their ministry. How are they living? How are, you know, the relationship between them and their wife, how are they living? How are they treating others? Like people say, uh, if you love me, show it in your actions. People have said that before. If you love me, treat me like you love me. Well, God is the same way, but they want to defraud God. And uh, it's like they want to rob him of his due, you know, the debt of unfailing love, you know. And if you love him, you'll show it in your actions. You know, you won't be cheating on him. Like a like a uh, husband has a wife. She says, I love you. I don't have anything to prove to you. And she keeps cheating on him. He says, you love me. You're cheating on me. And you love me. Christ said, he who loves me keeps my commandments. He who doesn't love me doesn't keep my commandments. And so they're saying it's not about... It's not worried about outward appearance. What they're saying is, and they're taking the scripture of the Lord that is true, and they're twisting it to try to serve, to prostitute the word. This is what Yeshua told me. They're circumcising uh, the word of God, cutting off. One person talked about when he was preaching that message, basically, saying, uh, Christ said, well done, good and faithful servant. 
In other words, it's just about your relationship about Christ. He didn't, he failed to say, because you've been faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler over many things. He didn't preach that. His well done was contingent on his, his works that he was faithful. The other person that was unfaithful, he was cast into outer darkness. But see, they circumcise the word. They chop off parts of scripture, you know, so they can suit the own, uh, the own uh, messages they want to preach, you know. Like, there's no condemnation, therefore, uh, to those who walk in Christ Jesus. They just cut off the word. They just circumcised it. It says, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. See, they circumcised that part. And in new translations of the word, they circumcise that part of the word because they're pro they want to prostitute the word for their own gain. Because if you tell people, you know, just that relationship, if you tell people what they want to hear, you can get their membership and you can get their, uh, you can get their money, but you haven't saved anybody. And they're just feeding themselves. They're telling these things because the money is stacking up. And those people tell you, you can lose everything. And if you have Christ, you get everything. But the people that are preaching that have all that money and all that stuff. And I'm not even going to dare to say that because we don't know what we would do until we lose everything. We don't really know. Christ said about every man, you know, his work is going to be tested on that day by fire. And part of the testing is in Revelation 9 when that fire comes down. And if their works are not, you know, pure... The works would be burned up, so to speak. I mean, the people, the, the, the their children also are the works, you know, their fruit. You know, he says you'll know them by their fruit. And so the children the world produce is their works, you know, whether they're burned up or not. And so those locusts are going to come out of that, that, you know, smoke on that day. And whoever's in sin, Christ told me my, to my face, you know, uh, the smoke of uh, there's core, uh, you know, when that breaks open, opens it up. It's going to cause outer darkness. They're going to be in outer darkness. And those locusts are going to be stinging them. And it's going to cause like inflammation in the body. And that's what I mean by their works burning up, you know. They say it's not about outward appearance. But uh, yes, it, you'll see outwardly who's of the servants of the Lord. You start to clean inward, Yeshua said. He didn't say not to clean outward. He said you start inward and then you work out, you know. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling, he says. But they want to say, oh, it's it's not, just forget outward. And, and they're, talk, they're talking about outward holiness. They're calling outward holiness. They got it swapped the other way around, you know. They got it swapped the other way around. That The outward appearance is what you appear to be, your lip confession. Yeshua said, you know, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. That's the outward thing. That heart, because he told one person once, if your heart is full of lust and your heart is full of idolatry and your heart is full of anger and bitterness and uh, fornication and, and, and all these desires of the world and covetousness, how can I be filling your heart and how can your heart be right with me? And so they have not taught the people this. They made the gospel frivolous and light. You know, they're treacherous, as the Bible says, like evening, evening wolves, you know, they don't gnaw the bones until tomorrow you know he means those things that are the bones are the strength of something whatever those things that are strong in their life the addictions the alcohol and everything they say we'll have tomorrow let us get rid of the outward you don't have to clean yourself up to come to god you know uh you just just wait till tomorrow you know like the evening wolves will gnaw the bones tomorrow but you may not have tomorrow jesus said today is the day of salvation you have this bottle of liquor in your hand. You say, I'm going to gnaw this bones tomorrow. I'm going to get rid of this strong addiction tomorrow because Christ has a sanctifying work. And you keep drinking on that liquor and all of a sudden you get behind the wall and you have a car accident. Now you're in hell. So, you know, that's what he means, gnawing the bones until tomorrow, guys. So we can't, we can't be living like that, guys. We got to get the sin out of our life now, you know. He says today's the day of our salvation. All you got to do is scrap the sin. Just forsake it. And follow Christ, you know, today, you know. I get that you're going to have things in your mind. You're going to have to overcome obstacles. But Christ wants your body, your body to stay put in holiness. The inward things. He'll help you. But you got to scrap. You got to let go of those sins, you know. You got to let go and, and just stay put here, you know. And like I said, uh, be cheerful and, and, and you walk with God. Don't be angry and don't be angry with other people if you're preaching the word of God. You know, be patient. We can preach like this as long as we don't have hatred toward anybody. You see what I'm saying?
you can you can be zealous it's nothing nothing wrong with that as long as you know some people this is how people start their messages good afternoon saints of god or this this is what i mean by bitterness the word of God, this is how they start. The word, and I'm not even exaggerating. The word of God says that, uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to see if I can think. I just, I don't have anger, so I can't think of an angry, like, scripture the way they can, you know. An eye for an eye, or a tooth for a tooth. The word of God says, repent or perish. Repent or perish. And there's, there's hatred. The word of God tells us to repent or the people will perish. I can just tell them, hey, if you don't repent, you'll perish. You see what I'm saying? You just don't have hate in your heart. And, and Christ, Jesus talked to me about that. Christ, when he comes, he's not repent or perish. When I was in sin and I came out of sin that one time, a long time ago, and he said, Sean, I don't want to have to kill you. And he was like that. He wasn't like, I don't want to have to kill you. You know, you know what I'm saying? You see the difference? There's love in his heart. He He's the Lord and he has the power to slay and we can preach like that as long as we don't do it with bitterness. And we can, I can raise my voice even, you know, and preach. Their silver is Sodom and their gold is Gomorrah, which goeth into Egypt and afterward is not mentioned for it is consumed as of a flood whose waters a second time shall be a flame. I can preach passionately without, you know, the anger is what I'm saying, the bitterness. You can't have bitterness in your heart. Do you, you see the difference, guys? I hope I hope you see the difference. It's what's in that heart is what counts. And by what I mean of that, you can feel the anger when it's in there. You know yourself if you have that bitterness in there. Because that, that inflammation will be there. That lust of that adultery. That lust for alcohol. Those are the things that need to be put to death. That's what, that's what I'm talking about, guys. When you fix that part, you're, you're going to have outward uh, fruit. Because when you don't have lust in your heart, you won't be going after lust. When you don't have drunkenness in your heart, you won't be going or desire for drunkenness. You won't be good, chugging the alcohol by bottle. How do you get those desires out? You keep sowing the word of God. You beat the word of God into your heart, like you know those vessels of beaten gold. You know, gold representing Christ, and a, a good measure beaten down, pressed together. You know, you you continuously sow the word over all those other bad seeds you sowed. And the word itself is going to become greater than those other seeds you sow, those other mindsets and desires. And you do that over time, you're going to overcome those addictions, those sins, you know. And like I said, you forsake them now, but I'm talking about the desires that would lead you back to them. You sow them until you get those desires crucified, where you no longer have in your heart desires for those things. You don't want, you want nothing in your heart that could lead you back to the world, is what I'm saying. But I love you guys. I'm going to let you go. I just wanted to preach that. You know, be careful. That outward word you hear, you know, be very careful. That's what it means. It means it, it, you can basically, it's a, it's a nice way of saying it doesn't matter if we do bad. As long as we pray the confession of Christ, we're good. Our outward works of sin don't matter, which is false. But I love you guys. Until next time. Shalom.